This was brought to you by Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on YouTube and Facebook. The other response, one popular among the more world, is to awaken everyone. If only the awakened can learn the mysteries, the argument goes, then more and more sleepers must be awakened. Even those who are not necessarily ready for it, many within the orders resist this possibility, used to years of maintaining strict secrecy and inducting only a bare few sleepers who showed some worth or merit. Some had come to disdain the sleeping and abhor the idea of intentionally trying to awaken the undeserving. To them, awakening is a gift from on high or the result of one's own Herculean efforts. Others counter that each awakening person must be allowed to prove himself on his own merits. It is not for the orders to choose who is to be allowed to awaken and who is to remain in sleep. For now, the progressive idea of promoting awakening wins the debate. Although conservatives within the orders wait for the right opportunity to sway opinion back to their more traditional viewpoint. Until that time, many mages work to disturb the dreams of the sleeping and rouse them to their more from their long night. The awakening from time to time everyone has moments of clarity in which they are able to connect to the pieces of the larger pattern and if only for a moment understand for one brief shining moment their minds are open to all that the universe has to offer ready to reach out and touch the great mystery. And then the phone rings, the baby cries, the neighbor comes knocking, someone honks her horn, or waves of everyday problems roll in unbidden and wash away the nascent glimmering of understanding. From a mage's perspective, none of this is particularly noteworthy. These are the usual and predictable pulsations of a sleeping mind. And while they rarely have any effect on the world, they represent the potential for awakening that lies in all people. When a mage does set up and take notice, it is when a sleeper has a moment of understanding that lasts for more than a few moments. By himself, a sleeper might have epiphanies, intimations that magic is possible. Such times are a brief escape from the Cuescence. They may last a day or a week or even a month, and it is these cases for which mages look because a mystical experience can elevate the sleeper's epiphany to an awakening. Why some experiences stir some individuals' souls and not others is one of the great mysteries. Awakening is a very personal experience, like snowflakes and fingerprints. No two are alike, 
Unfortunately, awakenings are not a typical pleasant experience. It's like realizing all at once that everything you thought you knew is wrong. When a chick pecks his way out of his egg, it feels like he is destroying the world, and so it is for the nascent mage. A mage may feel like he's crazy for having the insights or perceptions that he does. He might feel as though he's been plucked from the shallow end of the pool and dropped into the open ocean. But before the mage can accept his new world, he must dispense with his old one. And that act often feels like a violent betrayal of his former self. Far, fr far more people almost awaken than actually do awaken because the fear of leaving the world they knew causes many to retreat into black and white fundamentalism as they seek out any available anchor to cling to in a sea of shifting realities. A rare few souls exist to embrace the chaos of awakening with too much zeal, dispensing with everything they once were, including their ethics, morals, and sense of self. Not surprisingly, then, awakening is the sort of thing that people initially ignore and deny as their moment of understanding grows imminent they often fight it tooth and nail right up to the terrifying fateful moment when they give up and give in to enlightenment the more stubborn an individual the harder he's likely to fight his own understanding and the more suffering and trauma his growing awareness causes. But the more powerful a mage he'll be once he's fully awakened. Ordeals of awakening. A soul, once stirred, is either sent in a dream or ecstatic vision into strange astral pathways or plunged into a mystery play, a hallucinatory experience whereby the common mundane phenomena of the world are transformed into highly symbolic and meaningful ciphers. A person ex Experiencing an awakening is called a seeker. Many seekers think they're going crazy, and in a sense they are. The insane sometimes perceive meaning in random events, but the mage sees how no event is truly random in a vast tapestry woven by consciousness. Mystery plays, also called a walk-in world dream. The seeker essentially experiences the real world as if it were a dream. People and places appear strange and can even take semblances and roles alien to them, such as when a truck stop waitress appears to be a shiny maiden dressed in gossamer robes bearing the ambrosia of the gods. In reality, a one dollar slice of apple pie, or when the truck stop itself appears to be a filthy den of trolls, strewn with the bones of their kills. For the seeker, 
this dream world is real. The ambrosial pie is truly divine. The trolls truly nasty. But only she experiences this truth to everyone else around, including any other awakened mages. It's just a normal truck stop with a dumpy middle-aged waitress and a stale two-day-old slice of pie. To their eyes, the world is mundane. To the eyes of the seeker, it is alive with enchantment and pregnant with possibilities. Every action, everything communicates the deepest truths about the universe and the seeker's relation to it. The seeker has but to play along to unlock the key to the awakening. Anyone who doesn't realize that the Seeker is experiencing an awakening might thank him crazy. When he begins addressing a homeless beggar as the King of the Elves, his friends think he's surely lost his mind. The Seeker himself is usually unaware that he is undergoing a conversation with his soul. The Awakening's reality and verisimilitude is indistinguishable, indistinguishable from normal waking consciousness. Astral Journeys Those people who, for various reasons, refuse to see the world as full of enchantment might instead find it in their dreams. People often deny the call, but if the call is urgent enough, it cannot be avoided forever. The dream, deep meditation, or the re reverie of an ecstatic experience, the mage's consciousness is propelled across the astral threshold and into the vast infinities of his own soul. Although he does not yet know it, the path he follows leads to one of the five watchtowers. Whether or not he reaches that tower before he is drawn back into bodily awareness is the challenge. Inside the soul, the normal rules of reality do not apply. The environment could appear to be a featureless plain, a dense jungle, a shining cathedral, or the depths of intergalactic space. It may change instantly. The same is true of the figures that populate this space as people, animals, plants, spirits, and objects may appear as they are normally seen or transformed into something else. While such appearances and transformations may seem nonsensical, they are nonetheless bound to a kind of dream logic designed to offer the seeker a chance to realize his awareness. In initiation at the Watchtower The ultimate end of both a mystery play and an astral journey is to deliver the soul to a Watchtower for initiation. The Awakening is sometimes called the Call. It's the Watchtower that does the call. The soul, hearing its name, whispered from the supernal world across the infinite of the abyss, either responds and enters the trance of awakening or refuses the call and remains in sleep. In a mystery play, the Watchtower can be nearly anything in reality. 
a skyscraper, a phone booth, or a grove in the woods. Its true form is evident to the seeker, but to no one else. It is the archetypal castle perilous, the tower of testing, before which the seeker might be found wanting. If he passes the test by proving his perseverance throughout the awakening, he is admitted into the tower where he sees a multitude of names carved into its walls. With a knowing beyond reason, he recognizes the empty space reserved for his name and begins to write carve or will his name onto the surface. Even the illiterate know how to do this, for the process of writing is an archetypal image, not a literal act of writing. It is the awakened one's first spell, the declaration of his true self and his right to stand in the supernal world. By virtue of this name and its expression within the Watchtower, the awakened soul gains sympathy with the supernal realm in which his name is writ. Again, this process is archetypal and can take many forms. In a mystery play, the seeker might write his name into the ledger at a bank, although the clerks there might believe that he is merely signing up for a safe deposit box, unaware that he now claims a much greater treasure than all the assets within the bank, or he might instead sign his name outside the window of a lover he courts, initiating a marriage of his soul to the supernal. The permutations are endless. The symbols mean the same, a divine initiation. Once he has established his name in the heavens, the seeker returns to bodily awareness in the real world no longer a sleeper, he is now a mage. This was brought to you by Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on YouTube and Facebook, Roger Hansen on Patreon, and Gaming with Infamous on Discord. Thanks for stopping by. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Anchor. Breaker. Overcast. Pocket Casts. Radio Public. Spotify. Support us on Patreon. And check us out on Discord. All the links can be found in the video description below. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.